Let's have a look at this part of chapter 7 together. Right, so using networks in a global environment. So the use of networks has become widespread as the technology requires has become more widely available. And the use of the internet and social media has become a seamless part of our lives. There are many clear benefits in using a network, from sharing hardware and software to accessing the internet. There's also a number of risks associated with the use of networks, particularly in the context of a global environment. In this section, we look at the benefits to the individuals and organizations of using a network, and then at the risks that can be encountered. All right, so benefits. Establishing a network has a number of benefits over running standalone computers and resources. These include access to peripherals, for example, printers, low setup costs, terminals are cheaper than standalone computers, and the speed of communications. Further advantages of using a network are discussed below. So, Hardware, sharing hardware. Each networked computer can access and use hardware on the network. For example, suppose several personal computers on a network each require the use of a laser printer. If the personal computers and a laser printer are connected to a network, the personal computer users can each access the laser printer on the network when they need it. Businesses and home users network their hardware for one main reason. It may be too costly to provide each user with the same piece of hardware, such as a printer. I always like talking about the printer. It's a common example. Sharing data and information. In a networked environment, any authorized computer can access data and information stored on other computers in the network. For example, a large company might have a database of customer information. Any authorized person, including a mobile user using a smartphone to connect to the network, can access this database. The capability to provide access to and storage of data and information on shared storage devices is an important feature of many networks. Project teams can share data even if they are geographically remote by using an organization's virtual private network or VPN, which uses the internet to make global connections. Networks support collaborative work practices through services such as cloud computing, email and file transfer. Sharing software. Users connected to a network can access software or programs on the network. To support multiple user access of software, most software vendors sell network versions of their software. In this case, software vendors issue a site license. For example, our Adobe Suite, um, Photoshop, Illustrator, all of those. We have a site license for that, um, rather than spending copious amounts of money on each individual machine. Uh, it is a lot of money, but it's cheaper than buying it for each machine. So, sharing software via a network usually costs less than buying individual copies of the software package for each computer. That's what I just said. Transferring funds. Electronics funds, electronic funds transfer, or EFT, allows User users connected to the internet, an example of a wide area network, to transfer money from one bank account to another via transmission media. Consumers can use credit cards or an online payment system such as PayPal to make purchases over the internet. Businesses can use the internet to deposit their employee salary directly into their bank accounts. Both businesses, businesses and consumers pay bills online. Pay bills online which involves structuring their bank to use EFT payments to pay creditors. Global networks are a boon to online retailers who can effectively trade continuously without interruption. Certainly over the 2020 pandemic, it has certainly been a huge shift in online retailing. Risks. The risks associated with using a network relate to the inconvenience caused by a fault in the network devices and damage or loss of sensitive data caused by breaches of security. Breaches of security. Networks with inadequate security systems are likely to be attacked by malware or hackers. These threats can result in valuable information being accessed, stolen, uh, damaged or deliberately altered for fraudulent purposes. Hackers have been able to access customer credit card details by finding an opening in a commercial corporation network. Viruses and other malware can deliberately sabotage the operation of computers and software. 
Wireless networks without suitable encryption security run the risk of outsiders eavesdropping on messages or accessing important files transmitted between users. User dependence. Network users rely on a network to operate correctly so they can access files, applications and resources. If a component, such as a file server, develops a fault, users will not be able to run applications or access shared data. This limits the effectiveness of a worker and impacts on the productivity of the business. Social networks. The popularity of social networking sites such as Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and Snapchat has increased rapidly in recent years. There are a number of negative effects that overuse of social networking can have on users. These include distracting users from more purposeful tasks such as studying, reduced learning and research capability as students rely on information that is easily accessible from social network sites but is unverified. So this isn't about being distracted, this is about using information that isn't necessarily accurate or correct. Reduction in traditional communication between people such as face-to-face -face conversations. Adoption of poor language skills and underdevelopment of creative writing skills. Negative impact on health due to skipping meals and not participating in physical activity. What has that got to do with social networks? I suppose if it's the amount of time spending on it, also it could have to do with uh, body image. Reliance on virtual world experience rather than from the real world. You just have to watch that movie Ready Player One to know what we're talking about. Social media are now important tools for businesses to market their services and keep in touch with their customer base. Customers expect that organisations they do business with will be contactable via sites such as Twitter, Facebook and LinkedIn. Social media risks faced by organisations come under these three areas. Operational, regulatory and reputational. So what are they? So operational risks relate to employees posting material in breach of copyright, the monitoring of employees on social media and the ownership of material posted. Uh, regulatory risk involves company disclosures, market sensitive data that may be re revealed on social media before a public announcement. And reputational risk includes what the business or employees say online or what customers may say about the company. Thanks for listening. Thanks for getting to the end of the video. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe and smash that notification bell so you don't miss another new video. Thank you.